the Goomba. The Goomba is widely regarded as one of God's most important creations, and as time has passed throughout history, we've all collectively wondered what life would be like now if the Goomba was never created. After its conception, the Goomba would evolve and take many different forms throughout the Mario series. There are an unbelievable amount of Goombas, and I'm here to tell you about every single one. Every single Goomba. First, I'll show you the original Goomba that started it all. Goomba. The Goomba first appeared in Super Mario Bros. for the NES, and it was created as kind of an afterthought. The game was already pretty much done, but the development team felt that they needed an enemy that was easier to defeat than the Koopa Troopa. So, the Goomba was born. And since the game was so close to completion, they were pretty much already out of space to add anything else into the game. So it's literally just a mushroom sprite with legs that walks left and right. And that's all this little dude was. They barely even made it into the final release. But as we all know, a Goomba is deeper than that. Sure on the surface it may just walk left and right, but why is he walking left and right? Well according to the original manual of the NES Mario, the Goombas used to actually be allied with the Mushroom Kingdom in some way. But the Goombas ended up betraying the Mushroom Kingdom and working for Bowser. But not all Goombas would work for Bowser. Some are still chill with Mario. In games like Paper Mario, we can see places like Goomba Village, which is a town of just a bunch of Goombas doing their own thing, living their own lives in peace with the Mushroom Kingdom. And some Goombas just do neither and chill by themselves without involvement with Mario or Bowser. So really, they aren't all bad. It's up to each individual Goomba to choose what they want to do in the Mario world. And I just know you still kill them. You probably have an insane Goomba kill count to your name. But that's pretty much all there is to your average Goomba. They can use power-ups like the Cat Bell and the Tanuki Leaf, and some have wings, para Goomba. But now, let's move on to the actual other Goombas that you came here for. This is the Galoomba. It's one of the most known alternate Goomba species. And yes, there's a couple of alternate Goomba species, and I'm going to show them all here so it makes our Goomba family tree a little more organized. But the Galoomba, it started out in Super Mario World and was actually the only Goomba species in that game. There were no normal Goombas in Mario World, Smash 4 says so. And that may have you like questioning reality or thinking this is some weird ass Mandela effect because you definitely remember them being called fucking Goombas in the game. And I'll give it to you, yeah, you're kinda right, in the game they are referred to as Goombas. It's just when Nintendo made Super Mario 3D World 10 years ago, they decided to take this Mario World Goomba and give it its own name and make it its own species. So he's the Galoomba now. And in the Mario canon, that dude was always the Galoomba. After that though, man, I mean, this dude isn't that special. He's just a different Goomba species that to kill you need to jump on and kick instead of just jumping on them. I don't really know what else to say about the Galoomba. I mean, I guess there's this kind of weird Galoomba retexture that has no name. And it kind of reminds me of Cool Spot, the mascot for the beverage 7-Up. But that's the most you're getting out of me for the Galoomba. So here's the next Goomba species, Goombrat. One of the strangest Goombas God has ever created. Instead of having pointy teeth, they have like square teeth and, and hair. They're just kind of strange to me. They first appeared in Mario U and they're slowly becoming one of the most common Goomba types in the Mario world. There's really not much to him, but there's like a weird hybrid of him and the Galoomba called the Goombud. And I actually kind of like this one. This one's kind of dope. Appeared in Mario Maker 2. He's a cute little Goomba, man. I kind of like him. There's not much to him. He's a simple man, but I'm a fan of simple, so I heavily fuck with him. But enough of these well-known species, man. Let's get into some badass Goombas, like the Goombo, also called Chibibo in Japan. This is a Goomba relative that lives in Sarasa Land, which is the Kingdom Daisy rules in Super Mario Land. There are no Goombas at all in Sarasa Land, kind of like how there are no Goombas in Super Mario World's Dinosaur Land. Which means Goombas probably evolved to better acclimate to their surrounding environment. And the Goombo is an evolution of the original Goomba species to better handle Sarasaland's environment. But they kind of look pretty identical to the normal Goomba. They're just like a little smaller in the game apparently. But I don't care how identical they are. I don't remember the last time a Goomba was on a trading card with Tony the Tiger. So who's really the cooler fucking Goomba? So now we know there's Goombas from Dinosaur Land and Sarasaland. So, let me show you the Goomba from Isle Delfino, the Strollin' Stew. At first, I didn't think this was a Goomba at all, but apparently it is. Not only do some player guides literally call it a Goomba, the Strollin' Stew's Japanese name derives from the Japanese Goomba name. And that's going to be the case with any future Goombas I talk about. 
I don't want to say it derives from the Japanese Goomba name every time. So just trust me, man, it's a Goomba. Don't question shit. It's the first rule of University of Goom. But yeah, my goat, the Stroll and Stew. It's a Goomba that is acclimated to the tropical weather of Isle Delfino. They are pretty simple dudes, honestly, and don't do much. But I still fucking love this guy, man. I think the design is what makes him so cool. Like, this is insane profile picture material. Alright, now this thing, the Burbo. It's that thing from Mario Odyssey. They appear in many kingdoms in the game and were designed to be even weaker Goombas, which is impressive to me that they needed to make weaker Goombas. Apparently the Skyrim Dragon from Mario Odyssey can make these like demon purple Burbos, but it's not that deep dude, I don't even know what else to really tell you. They're pretty much just Odyssey's new Goomba. And now our final three Goomba species I have left to talk about. First there's Beanie, which is just a Goomba who's a bean, because guess what, it's from the Bean Bean Kingdom. Then the Curry, which is just a very obscure Goomba variant that appears in a single boss fight in Wario Land 3. He's just some chestnut dude. And then finally the last species of Goomba, the Wandering Goom from Wario Land. A completely peaceful Goomba that literally does no damage, but Wario can kill them anyway because he's a psychopath. The Wandering Goom also has some different variants like Giant Spear Man, also known as Spear Guy. But enough of that shit. Those are all the Goomba species. Now we're going to talk about the actual Goomba variants that exist. You know, the, the real shit, basically. Like, here's a good one to start off with, the Mad Goomba. This is what happens to a Goomba when you piss it off too hard. In Japan, its name is the Goomba of Rage. You don't fuck with Mad Goomba. Dude, this Goomba is so cool. Dude, look at his sprite. And the Paragoomba version too? This is like a top 5 Goomba. And its Paragoomba name is so fucking long that the Wikipedia page abbreviates it as M.RedP-Goomba. It's literally just an angry Goomba with wings, dude. It makes it sound like it's a vehicle. Alright, but then we have the Sad Goomba, which is exactly what you think it is. This Goomba isn't any more special than the Mad Goomba. It's just a Goomba that got really, really upset. But hidden inside Super Princess Peach's code, there's an unused level that just has like 80 sad Goombas. And there is so much sad Goomba on screen, the game actually lags and implodes on itself. That has nothing to do with the sad Goomba itself, I just think it's a fire fact. This next one here is also just a blue Goomba, just not as depressed. The Gloomba. It's those blue Goombas from the underground levels in the original Mario games. Besides the look and living space though, this Goomba is pretty much identical to our normal Goomba. You may be wondering where the name Gloomba comes from though. It comes from the Paper Mario series, and usually I'd be hesitant about calling these two the same. I mean the Paper Mario games have quite a bit of enemy recolors that have nothing to do with any other game. But these dudes literally only appear underground just like the Goombas from the original Marios. Gloom, like, like darkness underground. It's the same shit. This is the Gloomba, bro. Now I know we've seen some fire Goomba designs, like blue Goomba. But what if we made it pink and gave it a hat? Goombet. It's that female Goomba from Mario Odyssey. And you can earn power moons from her by becoming Goomba. So now we're done with the basic Goomba variants in the Goomba family tree. Female Goombas, underground Goombas. Now this is the Goomba when it has to adapt to the environment of space, the Octumba. It first showed up in Super Mario Galaxy, where it was first called the Electro Goomba. But when it reappeared in Super Mario Galaxy 2, it was renamed the Octumba. And it can now spit out rocks, which was heavily inspired by the Zelda enemy, the Octo Rock. Which does the exact same thing, you know, it shoots rocks. There's a couple more space Goombas too, like the Goom Beetle, a cool-ass Goomba that wears a helmet and has red eyes. That's all that one does. Then the Jacko Goomba, which at first looks really lame, just a pumpkin-headed Goomba. But this Goomba is probably the most successful Goomba in the Mario universe, because I'm not aware of any other Goomba that owns their own planet. The Jacko Goomba planet? Are you kidding me, bro? Like, for this to have even been a thing, the Jacko Goombas either spent years carving a planet to look like their face, like some kind of planet-scale Mount Rushmore project, or these dudes just stumbled upon a planet in some galaxy that shaped exactly like their heads, and, and they took it for themselves. No matter which option it is, they're both still insanely impressive. Look at this dope-ass concept art of them, too. They were raw before they were even made. But bro, don't even worry. The Goombas get even more raw. The Masked Ghoul. A Goomba that has red eyes, wears a hockey mask, and has a dagger stuck inside of its cranium. 
This Goomba dropped in Super Mario Land 2, and it's a clear reference to Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th, its name in Japanese literally being J-Sun. It's a pretty fucking sick Goomba, I don't know how many Mario games have the balls to put daggers in their enemies' heads, but they fucking did the impossible. Okay, for this next Goomba, I'm gonna open up PowerPoint here, and I'm about to really disappoint you. Bone Goomba, new Super Mario Bros. 2, I know, exactly what it looks like, but I'm gonna use this to transition into a way cooler Goomba, the Bone Galoomba. And I'm talking about this Galoomba specifically because this shit is deep, dude. This comes from the first volume of Super Mario Coon. When this volume was released, Super Mario World was the newest Mario game. So in the manga, they were doing some kind of gag story where Mario and friends would go into an alternative future and be transported into the future game Super Mario Bros. 5. In Super Mario Bros. 5, the first enemy Mario and friends encounter is the Bone Galoomba. But that's not all. After Mario kills the Bone Galoomba, it drops a bone power-up that turns Mario into Skeleton Mario. Now what does Skeleton Mario do? He actually does jack. Mario just becomes a skeleton for 3 minutes and then it wears off. But we can go even deeper, bro. Fuck Nintendo manga, let's get into the Nintendo Adventure books. The Nintendo Adventure books are pretty much just choose your adventure books, but you know, made by Nintendo with Mario and Zelda. So we're gonna look at some of the Mario books here because we got some exclusive Goomba lore inside. The first book we got here was released on July 1st, 1991, Monster Mix-Up. In the story of this book, Bowser has created a machine that allows him to combine two enemies into one. And with this power at his disposal, Bowser decides to play God and starts creating freaks of nature like the Goomerang Brother, a mix of the Boomerang Brother and the Goomba. It's described as being a Boomerang Brother with Goomba feet, and that's it. But because of its tiny feet, it's described as not even being able to, like, properly walk. Like, ho okay, holy shit, dude. There's more, too, like the Goomba Troopa, which is just a Koopa's head on top of a Goomba's body. But these ones actually function. They're actually able to, like, walk, you know? So they're a threat to Mario, kinda. There's multiple of them, too, like, to the point of there being actual Goomba Troopa leaders. Their names are Goombi and Foombi. And they are nothing special, dude. They are just two Goomba Troopas, no design. They are so disappointing that Mario captures them super easily, but he also accidentally captures two Goom bombs. Goombas mixed with bombs, and you are not gonna believe this shit. Even though the Goom bombs are a cross between the Goomba and the bomb, it actually just has the appearance of a Goomba Troopa. It has no special design. It can still explode like a bomb. It just looks exactly like a Goomba Troopa for some reason. And there's no explanation for this, it, you know, it just does. But we're done with our weird combination Goombas, let's go to another Nintendo adventure book, Doors to Doom, where we will meet the mad scientist Goomba, Dr. Sporus von Fungenstein. I wish we knew what this Goomba looked like because his name is so intriguing, but it's fine because he has a whole storyline we're about to get into here. Dr. Sporus von Fungenstein is actually the main antagonist of Doors to Doom, and what he did is make a machine that creates doors and the doors this machine creates can transport people into other worlds. With this newfound power at his disposal, his goal is to turn all the Koopas and Toads into mushroom and turtle soup, and sell the soup in a chain of fast food restaurants that he's gonna create, and hope to gather insane amounts of wealth. His plan obviously fails because Mario and Luigi stop him, but after he's defeated, it's revealed that this Goomba is not just a Goomba, but just some normal dude that works for the Royal Academy of Mushroom Science. And he was never a villain at all. He just sent a Goomba form of himself into the Mario world to test the brothers if they were worthy of winning the Academy's annual Peace Award. So it was the biggest waste of time in my life. I was excited to see Toad and Koopa Soup being sold abroad to different kingdoms, but fuck me, I guess. It's just some dude. We're done with these stupid-ass books anyways, man. We can get back into the games, like, like Hotel Mario for the Philips CDI, where we have Hotel Goomba employees called Bellhop Goombas. These Goombas only work for Wendy Koopa's hotel that she properly named Wendy's Blitz Snorton Hotel. This game is just weird, dude. That's not even the craziest hotel name I've seen in this game. But disregarding that, we have one more Hotel Mario Goomba, the Rhinestone Goomba. It, it's just a Goomba that cosplays Elvis Presley. The name Rhinestone Goomba is thought to come from the song Rhinestone Cowboy by Glenn Campbell, a country singer who was heavily influenced by Elvis. But this would sadly be the first and last time we would ever see Elvis Goomba. But it's not all lost. Now we can finally get into some of my personal favorite Goombas, because we're heading into the Mario RPGs. 
being games with actual story and dialogue, there's a good amount of Goomba characters that are pretty decently fleshed out. But of course there's like some random shitters too, like Goo, who's a Goomba that raced in a triathlon and that's it. But that doesn't mean all the non-story related Goombas are whack, cause the Tanumba exists. Which is one of my personal favorite like random Goomba variants and, and let me tell you why right? So we have the Tanuki power up in Mario, which can give things like a Tanuki tail and you get like Tanuki powers I guess or whatever right? This Goomba isn't that right? It's just a Goomba that's based off of an actual Tanuki without having it being related at all to power ups. Which is just a really amusing concept to me like what would happen if the Tanumba used the Tanuki leaf? How does that work? I need to know. And honestly, fuck the Tanuki Leaf even. The Goombas can do way more than the Tanuki Leaf. They're literally able to transform into other people. This Tanumba just transformed into Mario. The Tanuki Leaf doesn't have shit on that. So even in these RPGs, bro, some random Goombas just have depth for no reason. But let me tell you about a Goomba that was purposely given depth. This Goomba is definitely my favorite in the Mario and Luigi series. Private Goomp. This sophisticated Goomba wearing pajamas. He has his own little trio consisting of his two best friends Corporal Paraplunk and Sergeant Guy. Now, in the Shy Guy video I glossed over Sergeant Guy. I wasn't fully aware of what he was about so I just put him in the speedrun section. But I won't lie, I, I kinda messed up. I shouldn't have glossed over him and his two friends here. This group shows real Mario enemy lore like we've never really seen it. This is the story of the Elite Trio. The first time we meet these three is in Bowser's Inside Story. Bowser was kicked out of his own castle and it's now being run by Fawful. So our favorite little trio here tries to help Bowser take it back by shooting a bonsai bill toward the castle itself in an attempt to make Fawful flee from it or something. It ended up not working in the most dumbass way, so the trio dips and we don't really see them for a bit. The next time we see the group, they actually end up betraying Bowser and lock him into a safe. Because they thought now that Fawful is the new ruler, helping capture Bowser would get them some kind of crazy reward. They're pretty much just in it for the money. And realizing this, this actually kind of hurts Bowser's feelings. He like, lashes out and calls them traitors. He like, knew all of their exact names before, which probably isn't the case for all of his troops, so he kind of really felt betrayed here. After this betrayal, we don't really see Private Goomba and friends for the rest of the game, but they reappear in the post-credits. At this point of the story, Bowser has his castle back from Fawful, and he's just chilling in bed after he got beat up. The trio comes and shamefully begs for their positions back in Bowser's army, but after a stab in the back like that, who could blame Bowser if he were to reject them? But believe it or not, he doesn't. He lets them back on the crew. Bowser yells at them to go fix the castle and tells the group that they better pull their weight in beating Mario the next time they fight. Private Goomp, Sergeant Guy, and Corporal Paraplonk are extremely grateful for this, and they swear that they will do their best. This really shows Bowser's care for his minions. Even after being backstabbed by them, he forgives the three. It shows that maybe these guys really aren't that bad. That's not even the end though. The trio reappears in the sequel to Inside Story, Dream Team where they've been promoted to the rank of Honor Guard, and are now referred to as the Elite Trio, wearing new clothes with Bowser's mark on them. They're at the top now, but they wish to be even higher than they already are. They think that if they could beat Mario and Luigi, they could get promoted to a rank even higher than Bowser himself. So they fight Mario and Luigi, just as they promised Bowser in the past, in hopes for an even better promotion. But they end up losing, and because of this, Kemic demotes them to being janitors, and they are doomed to clean Bowser's castle forever. We couldn't have that shitty ending though. They would reappear one last time during the end credits of the game. Bowser is with them, and he tells them that, even though they lost, they put up one hell of a fight, and that he acknowledges them for being such great soldiers. Private Goomba and friends cry tears of joy, being able to be recognized by their leader. And that marks the end of Private Goom's story. There's technically a little more that fills in a bit of the gaps in the Bowser's minion side mode, but at that point I'm doing Goomp's whole autobiography so we're gonna move on. But Goomp is an excellent example on how every Goomba out there has their own life, their own dreams, and their own story. Some Goombas are still really stupid though bro, let's go to Paper Mario. These are two separate Goombas. Those are just dark variants of these Goombas, and I bet you couldn't even tell. And let's add a third one, fuck it. But Paper Mario also has some of the most gas Goomba personalities in the entire Mario world. Like the fan favorite character Goomfree. 
Goomfree is a 30-year-old Goomba who makes a living by eliminating problems. He's a real Goomba hitman. And using the ability Tattle, you can get an even more in-depth description of characters in Paper Mario, right? So using it on our friend Goomfree here gives us this description. That's Goomfree the Goomba. He looks kinda shady, I guess, but he's cool. People call him a fixer. You know, a guy that can make any problem just go away. Alright, I know Bowser is a big threat to the Mario world, but we need to look more into this dude, bro. I don't hear about Bowser doing anything near as vile as this. But honestly, I'm not even like too concerned over that. What intrigues me the most is that he's 30 years old, and he's not even that old looking. We've seen how Goombas look like when they get old. So what is the actual lifespan of a Goomba? Mario kills these things in like 2 seconds, and some of them have been able to live up until they're 30? That's fucking unreal, dude. Next Goomba. Mick Goomba. Even though he looks exactly like Goomfree, this is a completely separate Goomba. This is just kind of the basic Goomba NPC design in this game. So Mick Goomba here is his completely own guy, you know, he's a completely separate dude. But like Goomfree here, Mick Goomba is also a menace. If you talk to him, he will confess to you that he's a wanted Goomba, and he's hiding in the town of Rogueport to get the authorities off of him. He even makes Mario do some crime errands for him, having Mario deliver a box, but he tells Mario to make sure the box isn't seen or to never open the box. We never actually get to see what's inside, but after Mario delivers it, McGoomba will give him some coins for, quote, saving his neck. This is one high profile Goomba. Throughout the game, he boasts about how wanted he is and the severity of the crime he committed. At one point, he even says that he stole from Bowser himself. This dude is so raw that in the German release, he's literally called Al Gumbone, being the literal Al Capone of the Goombas. But if you choose to talk to him before the final chapter of the game, the Goomba actually opens up to Mario and nervously asks him if he's ever stolen from his mother, implying that this is actually the real reason he's hiding in Rogueport. And in reality, he's not this huge monster we perceived him as. And finally, the last random NPC Goomba we have in this game is Gumez, who's just a chill 40-year-old Goomba who chills in the grassy area of Rogueport. This dude just chills and falls asleep enjoying nature. Gumez loves nature so much that he has a problem with accidentally eating the flowers in the area. And that's all there is to this dude. Of course I'm not done with Thousand Year Door though, like, if I was, I'd probably be publicly executed by the Mario community within like the next week. So, yeah, let's let's move on to the cool ones, like Professor Frankly, the professor of the University of Goom. I definitely think he's one of the more recognizable Goombas in the series, having both a really memorable design and a pretty important role in this game. Overall though, I really don't have much to say about him besides the fact that he taught both the famous archaeologist Professor Colorado and aspiring archaeologist Goombella. And now that I've mentioned her, I can finally talk about her, Goombella. Probably the most popular Goomba personality ever. She's the first party member Mario befriends in this game, and her adventure with Mario is still remembered fondly to this day. She's a smart but sassy Goomba studying archaeology. You first meet her when she's being attacked by Lord Crump and his minions. Mario would help Goombella fight Crump and Goons, starting their friendship. They journeyed through the entire game together, but after everything, they would say farewell. In an email to Mario at the end of the game, she says that she's now Professor Frankly's assistant, and she is now working to uncover the rest of Rogueport's secrets. She promises that she'll tell Mario all about it the next time they meet each other. And to our knowledge, they never see each other again. We can see Mario still cares a great deal about her though. In the sequel to Thousand Year Door, we can see that he still keeps a picture with her in it, as well as all of his other friends from all the previous Paper Marios. There have been a lot of Paper Marios since Thousand Year Door though, and it would suck if we didn't know anything of what she's been up to, considering her popularity too. So the developers clearly agreed, because we got at least a little more Goombella lore and Sticker Star. When Mario searches the junkyard in Shy Guy Jungle, he can read a paper that Goombella left behind. And the only fucking footage I could find of this is just some kid pointing his phone at his 3DS, but sure, this works. Reading it reveals that she's actually become a full-on archaeologist like she dreamed, and she's recently been studying the Chomp ruins, and studying some kind of ancient civilization. As of now though, that's all we know about her. Now the last of the cool Goombas. They all reside in the humble Goomba village. The village allied with the Mushroom Kingdom. So we're going back a generation to the original Paper Mario game, to see our man, Goombario. He's a cute little Goomba who loves his family. You got his caring dad, Goompapa, as well as his caring mom, Goommama. 
his grandparents Guma and Goompa, and his sister Goombaria. Now Goombario himself is like the actual important one here. He's a Goomba that's a huge fan of Mario and Luigi. He looks up to Mario so much that his government name is literally Goomba Mario. He was just a humble Goomba chilling in his village until Mario came by. When he arrives, Goombario's grandfather, Goompa, suggests that he should join Mario on his journey. The reason Goompa offers this is because when Goompa was young, he actually did something similar and had his own squad and traveled the Mario world. Not only could joining Mario make Goombario follow in his adventurous footsteps, but he gets to hang out with fucking Mario. Dude, everyone loves Mario. Mario accepts and Goombario would become his first party member ever. He's just a wholesome and playful Goomba, and you get to chew with him over the course of the game. The two would meet some other Goombas in their journey too, like the badass red and blue Goomba Bros. Two Goomba brothers that work under the Goomba King. Our heroes fight the duo and beat them until they cry. The brothers knowing they can't beat Mario retreat to their king. The king then steps up and fights Mario and Goombario with the help of his two minions. They eat shit, and our hero's journey would continue. But eventually, Goombario and Mario's journey would end, and we would never hear or see from Goombario ever again. He was planned to actually be in the sequel of Paper Mario, Thousand Year Door. He's literally in the game's files, but we already know in that game the Goomba party member is Goombella. Goombario and Goombella's movesets in battle are pretty similar too, so it's likely that at some point in early development, Goombella was just Goombario. But yeah, we haven't seen the dude since, except for that one photo from Super Paper Mario I mentioned earlier. But the damn Goomba King made it into future games over him, being mentioned in the Thousand Year Door, as well as both appearing in Mario 64 DS and Mario Kart DS, just under a new name being Goomboss. His minions got screwed though, they're probably dead in some ditch. That's finally it though for every interesting Goomba. There are a lot of memorable ones, but always there's some shitters. Even in the Paper Mario series, like the Mural Goomba, a Goomba mural that can attack people, and it's even listed on the wiki as its own separate species, implying that a normal Goomba evolved into a literal art piece. All the later Paper Mario Goombas just really piss me off in a way that I just can't describe. Like why is this one a separate Goomba? The Paper Cone Goomba? And then there's the shiny cone Goomba. Fuck you, dude. Remember the two captain guys from the Shy Guy video? There's two captain Goombas, and guess what? They appear in the exact same games. How do you both specifically appear in Mario Party 8? You get how absurd this shit is, and there's a lot I still haven't mentioned, so I'm just gonna have a little extra section here of all the other extra Goombas. And I'm gonna make Bezzy do it, because I don't really feel like it. Check, check, check. Bienvenidos. Bezzy here. Kind of funny that in the middle of me doing very busy things, Carlito gets me to do his video for him once again. I love Goombas, honestly one of the best villains ever. I might be colorblind. Goombas have such a poetic feeling to them. They feel like an answer to an important existential question. Why do I feel like this room is shrinking? With that being said, let's get right into the Goombas. First off, we have Ghost Goombas. They're scary, they look kind of goofy, and they double as a ghost for Masked Ghouls Goombas. And, not to mention, they have one of the best Game Boy commercials to ever exist. I was quite a big fan of this, and I watched it a couple times growing up. And, let me tell you, nostalgia, brother. Aqua Goombas. They kind of remind you of that one thing from the Spongebob movie. That's mad cute, if you ask me. Goom Diver. Same thing, just not nearly as fun. Black Chess Demon. See, this is a really sick concept, but Carlito said it was whack, so let me drop a lore drop on you. See, the Goomba hero, it died, but before it died, they got cursed by the Shadow Queen a thousand years before the events of the Thousand Year Door. And when you open the chest, it frees the soul of the Goomba hero, and you can turn into a plane afterwards, which is pretty sick. A Gromba is a Goomba but with a rock head and a Dromba is a dream world Gromba. Next up we have Pest Nuts. You see, now if you ask me, I would just call these Urchin Goomba. They barely even look like Goombas but they are Goombas because they showed up with Private Groom Squad which is a squad of Goomba. Dreamy Goombas. Pirate Goombas. Part of my French but there's Prickly Goombas which are just Goombas inside of spiked chestnut shells. Then, after that, there's also shiny Goombas, which Minecraft glint. Goom Goom. I relate heavy to this, so I take it very seriously. This is a Goomba that seeks love, true love, desperate love, from any female Goomba. 
but it must stay purebred because it only accepts it from Goombas, nothing else. Shoe Goomba. You see, these are just Goombas in a shoe, but fun fact, they used to be originally called Karibo's Goomba, which is funny because Karibo just translates to Goomba, which just means that it says Goomba's Goomba, which, if you ask me, it's a man's man, brother. Chumbas, and don't be surprised if this ends up as my new profile picture, but Chumbas are just Goombas that are supposed to be a reference to the sound that Choo Choo Trains makes, which is, if you didn't know, Choo Choo. Shrublets are just Goombas that are mixed with a shroob, and shroobs are the aliens from Shrew Planet that appear in Partners in Time, which don't ask me anything else about because I've never played that game, and I'm going based off the notes that Brother Carlito gave me. Skating Goombas are just Goombas that wear ice skates. We have triplets, which are just three Goomba siblings that run a shop. And then after that, we have zombie Goombas, which are just Goombas from Super Mario Bros. Super Show and the episode Count Cupula, which are literally just Goombas that are zombies. Goomba Idols, these are a pair of speaking Goomba statues that show up in Mario Party 8. They guard a sacred island and seem to refer to themselves as actual gods, which implies the idea of a religion. This is then backed up with the Goomba Mummy, which shows up in the Mario Super Show, and this time in an episode called the Ten Koopa Man Mints. And it's a Goomba that's just a mummy, but at the same time, the Ten Koopa Man Mints applies the idea that there is a Moses Goomba. Mega Sparkle Goomba. When 16 Goombas love each other very much, they come together to become the Paper King Goomba that sparkles. Goombas that are based off of organism themselves that appear inside of Bowser's body. Goomther is another random Goomba NPC. He's just a Goomba in Rogueport, known for being coned and robbed for his belongings all the time. Greaser Goombas, a gang of Goombas that ride motorbikes. Gritty Goombas, Goombas that resemble a kind of mummy, appear in Teehee Valley. Goo Goomba, green Goombas found in Mario RPG. Crinkle Koomba. Now this is a reoccurring paper Goomba that fights Mario and Luigi. The brothers can't even remember the specific Goomba even though they fought him on four separate occasions. Goombob, a rich young Goomba who appears in Mario Party. He lives in Goomba Manor and he has a crush named Goom Betty. Goom Betty. Armored Goomba. It's a Goomba that wears a pot on its own. Prongo, a Goomba that wears a really dumb looking mask with spikes that come out of his head. Inner tube Goomba, a Goomba that wears floaties. And last, but certainly not least, Gary. And that is the pinnacle of the Goomba race. Thank you. Appreciate it, Bez Monster. And with that, that was every single Goomba. I didn't mention Goomba variants that don't have their own names or are just bigger or are just some mess of paper because frankly, that shit is lame dude. I want to know about the cool Goombas, the Goombas that tell me a story, the Goombas that let me look into their little world, a world that honestly isn't really talked about much in the Mario series. Like before I did research for this video, while playing Mario I'd definitely kill a Goomba without hesitation, but now I feel like I kinda refuse to kill them without knowing who they really are. Every Goomba has a story, and who are you to end that story? I can tell you what you'd be, you'd be a douchebag. Chaboomba. Yo, Carlito here. I don't do this like goofy update shit often, but I felt like it was kind of needed. I was gone for a month, and it kind of made me realize that, you know, shit happens, busyness. So I wanted to make a second channel, if you were interested. That's more about me rather than video essays about Donkey Kong. Because video essays take a long fucking time to make, but they're really fun, so I'll keep doing them. And you guys seem to like it. Regardless though, the channel is going to be called Carly2, and you can check it out in the description. It's going to be more of just me, rather than just video essays, like highlights with my friends, or just shit that I find funny, that I probably think you guys would find funny. Pretty much just more Carlito, and I think it's going to be really fucking funny, and you should check it out. Thank you for hearing me out, and I'm out.